What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook, and this is Blue Giant Media. We're here to help you find, learn, and play the games that you love. Today, we're taking a look at Role Player by Keith Matejka and published by Thunderworks Games. We're going to take the game, we're going to open it up, we're going to set it up in real time so you can get a feel for how long it actually takes to set the game up, so you can set, up, set up along with me, or so you can just get a feel for how long it actually is. And then we're going to take a quick rules overview and play through the game a little bit so you can get a feel for how the game plays and a quick grasp of the rules so you can jump right in. So without further ado, let's ready, set, play. In role player, you're going to be rolling a character as if you were getting ready for an RPG, like Dungeons and Dragons. It's going to come with a whole bunch of dice. Go ahead and keep them in the bag to start the game. Set the bag to the side. You can take all of the coins, go ahead and dump them out. I have my charisma tokens mixed in with them because they serve a similar function. If you want to separate them out, feel free. I tend not to, though. You can take the backstory cards, you can set them aside. Each player is only going to be using one of these, so you don't necessarily need to get the whole stack out. You can wait to get the colored um, tokens out because they are going to correspond to what um, class you are going to play as. And then there are alignment cards here as well. There's going to be some item cards for the market and they will be split into, you can see there's cards with one dot up in the corner, and there are cards with two dots up in the corner. So you can separate those out. Each player is going to choose one race. There's dragonkin, elf, human, halfling, orc, if you have the Frogkin promo, there's that one, and then there's Dwarf, and each one is double-sided with a male on one side and a female on the other side. So I'll go ahead and set this game up as if it was for two players, and I'll just take the first two off the top. You can be a Dragonkin, and I'll be an Elf. Then each player is going to be given one alignment card. You can put the rest back into the box. You can take five gold. If you have more players, the third player is going to have one additional gold, and a fourth player is going to have two additional gold. The setup guide says to take a random die, and that die color will let you know which uh, class you're going to play. So I will take purple and you will take red. So then we will go in. So here the class card for red is either going to be barbarian or warrior. So the die that you take determines what color you determine which side you want to play as. So it says to take a die out to choose. In my opinion you can also just choose if you especially like to play with certain colors. So I'm not going to look at them too much, I'm just going to place them as they are. And then we are playing with two players, and so you can see on these market cards, or offer cards, they'll say two players plus, two players plus, three players plus. So we're going to flip that one over to its two player side. So what should happen is there should be one more card than there are players, and I'll go ahead and do this this way. There should be one more card than there are players. So we've got, I'll also do this, so it goes from your left to your right. And then the one in the middle, so not the outside ones, if there are more of these, the ones in the middle should have coins showing. Okay, then we're going to give each player a player sequence and reference 
and at the end of the game it'll be used for scoring. And then we will randomly give each player a backstory that they are going to try to achieve. Now that you have a player color, you're going to take the tokens for those colors. So you will get a red, you're going to put one right in the middle there, and one right here, so that you can keep track. That'll be used for scoring at the end of the game. And then I will do the same, starting with my alignment in the middle, and this one to mark my class. Then we're going to create the market. So in a two-player game, we're going to remove seven cards from here and seven cards from here, and then put the ones with one dot on top. You'll take three out in a three-player game, and in a four-player game, you're going to keep all the cards in. So you will take these cards. I'm going to remove seven because this is a two-player game. All right. Put those on the bottom. And then shuffle these up. Take out seven. And put them on top. And just like these, you're going to play or turn over the number of players plus one. We'll go ahead and add a coin here. We will roll to see who the start player is. Okay, so I will be the first player. And then we are going to draw until we have six dice for two player game. Four, five. And then we will roll these dice. And we will place them in our boards as a kind of our starting setup. So as you're placing these dice, uh, this initial placement, you don't worry about the abilities of placement. Because each time you place a game as a, uh, a die during the game, you're going to get to take special abilities. But you do want to pay attention to your backstory because it's going to tell you where you want certain dice. In order to be savage, and it's got some nice flavor text here, you want kind of this alignment of colors. So you might want to put a black die here as the first one, and you always fill from the left to the right in each of these um, rows. So here you could place this black die, and it's going to fulfill one, at least, of the placement for your backstory. And at the end of the game, you're gonna get either one, three, or six points based off of how many dice are actually in those alignments. Then you also need to look at your particular class, which in order to be a warrior, you want to be pretty high in strength and constitution, and then relatively high in dexterity, and then the other stats you don't really care about. So maybe you don't want to put this two here because it's going to make it a little bit harder to get 16 or 17, except that you can, look, you can think ahead knowing that the strength ability, whenever you play a die here later in the game, we'll get to flip this over. At which point it's maybe not that bad. So let's just go ahead and keep that there, and then we'll randomly place some of the rest of these. We'll go ahead and put a six here, and the red is good because you're going to score one point for every die in your character sheet that matches your player color. So that's nice. And there's a six, and you want to have 18 in your strength. So sixes are good. Ones are also good because they can get flipped to a six, but we don't necessarily want to put that there because then we're only going to get one chance to put a six there later, and we also want it to be blue. So maybe we want to put it somewhere else in case it becomes useless, but also so that we have the ability to use dexterity to swap the placement of them later in the game. So as you can see, each one of the placements is going to give you a lot of abilities to manipulate where these things go and what numbers they have. And then the rest of these, maybe they're just a little bit of a throwaway just because they're not very good numbers. So why don't we just kind of place them down here and worry about it later. Since you had a yellow, you will get an additional two coins. Every yellow die that you add in is gonna give two coins. Also, if you do go all the way across to fill one of these spaces, you will get one coin because that filling the last uh, space in one of your rows is going to give you one coin. All right, coming over to me, I want, as a monk, to have 18 or more strength, so it doesn't have to be exact. So I do want to have that there. 
Maybe I want to put this one here so I can flip it later. And I'll put this six there. So basically now I, I really want to get a six to place here so that I can flip that one. So it makes things a little bit trickier. I tend not to like filling the first three, the strength, dexterity, and constitution early on because they are so valuable. So maybe I don't want to do that right away. Maybe I, my intelligence I don't care too much about and I want to have a black there anyway, so maybe I will do that. And then what other stats do I not care as much or are they easy? Let's go ahead and do, oh this is, this can be good. Sometimes having three dice the same color in a row, there are, might be benefits for that. So maybe I'll do that just to see what happens. So let's just take it like that. We're now ready to begin the first round. We'll do that by taking the number of players plus one, dice out of the bag, and rolling them. Then we are going to place them from lowest to highest. In the case of a tie, the person who is the first player is going to choose which spot they're going to go in. So since I get to choose first, maybe I will go like this. Okay, so then I get to choose first. If I choose a lower number, that will give me the ability to choose what I want to buy from the market first. But if I choose a higher number, then obviously it's a higher number, which is usually beneficial. If I choose this one in the middle, then I'm gonna get coins. So I think I'm gonna take this one so I get a bonus coin, and then I'm gonna place this yellow die, which is going to give me two bonus coins as well. So now from here on out, every time you place a die, it's gonna give you a special ability. Strength allows you to flip one die over. So it turns a one to a six, a two to a five, a three to a four, and you know all of them flip the other way. Dexterity allows you to swap the position of any two dice. Constitution allows you to lower the value of one die and raise the value of another. Intelligence lets you re-roll a die, and if you don't like the number that you get, then you can keep the number that you originally had and keep it in the same spot. Wisdom allows you to move around your alignment. And Charisma is going to give you one discount token that can be used only in that round. So at the end of your round, any discount tokens that you have will be discarded. So it must be used on the turn in which you got it. So you don't necessarily care about your charisma. So you'll go ahead and go there. You're gonna get one coin for filling in the last row, the last, the last space in your row. And then you're going to get one charisma token. Since you took the first die, you are going to be the one who gets to choose what you want to buy first. Now you can still only ever buy one thing, which is unfortunate for you because both of these are good for you. So we're going to go ahead and buy one of these. They cost three coins, so you will spend two coins and a charisma token. And it doesn't really matter which one of these you take, but you will go ahead and take the chain leggings and you're going to place this over here where you place your armor. This particular armor is especially good for those who are white or red. It's going to give you more points the more sets of chain armor that you have, plus you as a red player are going to get plus one bonus point for having this. Just the red and the white classes are going to get one bonus point. So right now it's worth one point. If you get another one, the two together will be worth two points. Then the three together would be worth four. Four together would be worth seven. And five together would be worth ten. So. Unfortunately, there's one gone right off the bat, but that's at least going to be worth one point, or two points, since you are a red class. Then it's going to come to me. So I am going to choose to discard one of these, because I don't really want either one. And I will discard one, which allows me to take two coins. But, I have a special ability as a monk that says, after discarding a card from the market, you can take any attribute action. So I will take a strength action to flip this from a 2 to a 5. So now I have 14, which I need 15 in order to get 2 points at the end of the game. So we're getting pretty close there already. So now we will discard any Charisma tokens if you still had any. Return these to the center. Discard any remaining market cards. Add this die back in. Refresh any coins so that the middle cards have, a, have one exactly coin on them. Turn over new market cards. 
and pass the bag to the next, to the left, uh, to your, the new start player. We will then draw three, roll them, place them, and be the first one to choose. So you will be the first one to choose, and you might want this number one because it is red, which you get one bonus point for every red die. And you already know that I've got a bunch of them, so maybe you want to get everyone that you can even more than normal because you might be worried that you're not going to get a chance to get more as the game goes on. So you can go and place this here and flip it to a six. So you'll take this so that you know that you'll get the first pick of the market cards this round as well. And now I might want a six because sixes are good. So I'll go ahead and take this six and I am going to place it, well, I will go ahead and place it in Constitution. Now that doesn't match the color, but maybe I hopefully can swap them later. Or I could place one in Intelligence and re-roll. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that, I'll re-roll this one. Pretty good result. So I will keep that instead of going back to the one. Okay, so now you get to be the first one to pick. And let's see what you might want to do. You might want to get climbing. So skills are going to go right here, and that is going to give you an ability that you can use. But whenever you use it, you have to move your alignment. And if you can't move your alignment, then you cannot use the ability. And that skill, once it's used, is going to be exhausted. And at the end of the round, one of your skills can get brought back. So if you have multiple skills, that's fine. But if you've used all of them in one round, only one of them is going to be ready again the next round. This particular one says that before you select dice, you're going to flip all of them over. And then reorder them, and then choose. So that's going to give you a little bit more... Uh, flexibility in getting the, the color and the numbers that you might want going forward. And then I am going to get this one right here. So I'll spend three and I will get acrobatics, which that one allows me to, again, it also wants me to move my alignment up and when I do I get to add one to one die and reduce the value of another by one. So basically I get to take a constitution action and I will go ahead and do that right now I'll move my alignment up because I want to be right there to be um, neutral good. And then I'm going to raise this die up to a five and lower this one down to a two. So now I have met my wisdom goal. So if I don't change anything at the end of the game, this row is gonna be worth two points. This one that, got, that no one picked um, is a trait card. When you get a trait card, it is going to immediately move your alignment, in this case up, it says. Now, if you are already at the top, that's okay. You can still buy it, and it's, so unlike the skill cards, you don't have to be able to move the alignment. It's just going to move it as much as possible. And then traits are going to give you different ways to score points at the end of the game. This particular one says that you would gain three points for each column that has four or more dice of the same color. So, pretty difficult to pull off four of the six being the same color, but if you do, that's three points. And since a winning score is usually maybe 30s, three points could be 10% of that. So it's pretty good for one card, but neither one of us felt that we could pull that off. So we'll go ahead and clear that out. Refresh. Discard. I get to make my acrobatics available again. And we would pass the dice over, three new dice, three new market cards, and I am pleased because there's purple, which I want. And I get first pick, which I also want. And I will now, huh, that is interesting. I will go ahead and place this here, and now this that I lowered from three to a two, now is being flipped over to become a five, which helps my chances of being able to meet my charisma goal. I do take 
the last in the order. So I didn't even look at any of these, but I know that I'm going to be last. Then it will come to you, and let's see what you might want to do. Well, you don't care much about anything other than these two rows. So we'll go here so that we can raise this up to a six, and we will lower, let's see, which one of these do we want to lower? Well, let's go ahead and lower this one, because if we lower it again, it becomes a one, which we can flip and then swap over here. It's kind of a, a bit of a reach, but it's a possibility. So we'll go ahead and go there. And you get to take a bonus coin, and you will be first amongst the two of us to choose what you might want to buy or discard. So, this one it would move you this direction, which is nice. This one would move you that direction, which is not nice. But this one is going to give you two points if either your intelligence or wisdom are below eight, which you're probably going to be, so that would be a pretty good bet for two points. This one right here is going to give you one point for each skill card you have. So if you continue to get more skill cards, that could be really beneficial. So that one likely could be worth more, plus it also moves you over to get, put you in a better position to get your alignment. So we'll go ahead and get that one. So as soon as you buy a trait card, and we'll go ahead and slide this up a bit, as soon as you buy that trait card, it's going to move your alignment. And then we can go ahead and tuck this under. And you're going to get one point at the end of the game for every skill card that you have. So you're going to want to get more skill cards as the game goes on. Then I will get these leather boots so that I can start getting an armor set like you that is beneficial for me as the purple player. Discard. Refresh. Put the dice back in. Get rid of any charisma tokens if anybody had any. Make sure that there's still a coin on the middle cards. Pass the dice. And we will continue in this fashion until we get to the end of the game when all of the spaces are filled. So as you can imagine, as you get to the last couple spaces, it can be pretty tense hoping that you get exactly what it is that you want. Now at the end of the game, the ways that you're going to score points are your alignment, which could either be 3 or negative 1, and some other cards have some different arrangements of those. But you're going to score points based off of where you are on alignment. You're going to score points based off of whether you satisfy your strength, dexterity, constitution, uh, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And I just realized that I failed to take advantage of your special ability of when you bought this armor, you should have gotten a chance to take a constitution action as well. Every time you buy armor, you get to take a bonus constitution action, which is to raise the number of one die and lower the number of another by one. So you'll score points for this, though. If it doesn't have a plus on it, it has to be the exact number. If it has a plus on it, it just has to be above that number. Then you'll score points for your backstory. Whether you have one, two, three, four, five, or six dice in the correct place and color that matches your backstory, then you're going to score either one, three, or six points. You will total up points for your traits. You will get one bonus point for every die of your color. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points will be the winner. That should give you a pretty good idea of how to play Role Player by Keith Matejka and published by Thunderworks Games. If I missed anything in the rules or if I was unclear, please let me know in the comment section below so I can straighten myself out. And while you're there, if there's any other comments, maybe you want to ask me a question about my favorite color, my favorite mythological creature, just go ahead and shoot me a question. I'd love to connect with you in any way, shape, and form. If you want to know more about Role Player, see my full review. Keep an eye out for links to that in the description section below. You'll also find a link there to macronovagames.com where you can buy Role Player and many other great games. Until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see, and as always, have a wonderful day.